The Justin Robert Young Daily Program brought to you as always by PayJuryDaily.com. Do you want to support this show? I mean, look, if you're listening to this show, there's a great, there's a good chance that you listen to it for most days during the week, right? This is a daily show. So I have a relationship with you every day. I am breaking my hump here for you guys. And, and in that spirit, if you would like to give a little bit of value, if you believe that this little program gives you a little value in your life, you can give me a little value back. But in money form, payjurydaily.com. Come on over. The water's fine. It's the terror of knowing what this world is about. I really, I was reading the lyrics of that song. That's a dark fucking song. That's a really dark song uh, under pressure. I don't know. Hi, everybody. It's me, Justin Robert Young. I have a lot of things to talk about today, but mostly it's things that you guys talk about. It is Thursday. Thursday is when we uh, we, we clear out the mailbag. We, we, we settle up with everything that we've been talking about over the week. And uh, we move into our signature segment that officially begins the countdown to the weekend. High thoughts. But we begin with the mailbag. Brett wrote in about casting a young Stan Lee. Casting a young Stan Lee. This is what we were talking about yesterday. Who will play Stan Lee in the inevitable biopic? We had a lot of people write in. Brett wrote in Eddie Redmayne. He was not alone in this. There were a couple of people who wrote in with Eddie Redmayne. I'm a Redmayne fan. I like Eddie, Eddie Redmayne. But I think that his best moments are not, his natural talent is not the natural talent of what you would expect to stay in late from. And in general, I think the hardest thing that you can do in acting is to be sort of like low-key, adorkable, charismatic. It's hard to do that. Like, it's, it's easy to come off try hard doing it. Conversely, I think it's easier to go, if you are goofy charismatic, to go from that to brooding. I think you can brood easier than you can be adorkably charismatic. And I kind of feel like that's what we're looking for with Stanley. But a good thought. He's a great actor. That's for sure. Keith uh, wrote in with a couple... Suggestions here. Jay Baruchel. Baruchel? Baruchel? I did say it might have to be Jewish. Ansel Elgort, Joe Keery, and Miles Teller. So, Jay Baruchel would be from uh, uh, This is the End, right? Ansel Elgort is your baby driver. Miles Teller from Whiplash. I don't even know who Joe Keery is. Who the hell is Joe Keery? Who the fuck? Oh, oh, Joe Keery is fucking my 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 fucking homeboy from Stranger Things. Joe Keery is uh uh, he's my fucking floppy haired uh a uh, uh, new Emilio Estevez. I love Joe Keery. You want to know what? I'm not I'm not totally out on Joe Keery. I don't, I, I, I'm I not totally out. You throw a little mustache on there. He's got a big old head of hair. He certainly is. He, he, he showed he could play kind of adorkably charismatic in Stranger Things. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm leaving Joe Keery on that list. I'm leaving Joe Keery on that list. 
Senior Geek, uh, switching topics real quick, talking about the the nasty Disney shirts that we were asking asking about. Uh, says, I work for Disney Anaheim Resort Transportation and Parking. One of my many roles involves loading guests headed to the park onto shuttle buses or trams. It's not up to me, but I'll often inv- advise guests that their apparel may not make it through the front gate. This gets interesting around Halloween. I've had to let more than one Han Solo know that his dead-on replica blaster would not make it through security. My favorite was a couple's costume, however. He had on a t-shirt that said, Peter Peter, an orange makeup around his mouth. The woman was dressed as a pumpkin. I'm pausing for hopefully as long as it takes people to get this joke as it took me. It took me a solid five minutes. A solid five minutes to realize why that was a very, very, very funny joke. If you don't get it, please hit me up on Twitter at Justin R. Young. At Justin R. Young. Hit me up if you didn't get it for as long as I didn't get it. Drench Wildfire says, I got it immediately. That's hilarious. We'll brag about it, fucko. Frozen Cusser writes, I'm a day behind, but here are my Disney shirt ideas so far. Number one, every last inch of me is covered in hair on the shirt with a picture of Mickey's pants on the ground. Two, I heart and then a picture of a corkscrew. And three, a picture of toys, the Toy Story gang looking into a nightstand drawer. A speech bubble coming out of the a drawer reads, Buzz. Now, here's the funny thing. The funny thing is, is that I introduced this Disney thing because it specifically has to be about drinking. It has to be drinking centric because that's where the leeway comes in. And yet almost everybody who has written in has made it sexual on some level. Now, that being said, we have also gotten a few emails and I've, I've seen some stuff on social media of the, uh, 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 the gay day. Gay day at Disney has a lot of, as, as many pride events do have a lot of sexual innuendo right like that is that is just an an element of that culture that happens i think the the, my favorite one was somebody who said on gay day there was a a couple's t-shirt that said someday my prince will come with some very interesting trailing dots you know (laughs) Like the like dot 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 was very very interestingly, you know, arcing and asynchronous. Keith writes, "This was something that that happened earlier in in the week. I or maybe it was even last week. I I, I was making fun of my wife, who's probably hearing this right now because she's homesick. That she says." Certain words, one word specifically, very funny to me. Uh, and and that specific word is wolves or wolf. She does not say wolves or wolf. She says woofs and woofs. However, Keith came in and made a startling, startling discovery. Keith writes, your beloved spouse is not alone. I found somebody who says wolves the same way she does, and it is none other than recording artist Sia. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Some folks might remember another story, another story that was told on this program. Ashley and I, specifically since we were in Japan, have very much loved to go to karaoke. 
But there was a very fun moment while we were in Japan where, look, we're, we're out there. We're having a good time. Maybe there's a few too many imbibed. We were in Nagano, and it was only us and a lesbian couple from Vancouver. One of them was dressed like Jay from Jay and Silent Bob. The other had on what appeared to be a prom dress. It was a very weird scene. The only other person besides the four of us was a very, very, very patient barmaid uh, uh, who was enjoying these four, well, three, I mean, foreigners, uh, uh, all, all singing, singing songs all night. When it comes to a certain point when my wife decides that she wants to sing Sia, which is odd. Because among singers with vocal dexterity, right, it's like Adele, Sia, like Whitney Houston. There are certain certain singers for which you're not going to do a good karaoke. You're not going to, because either you're going to have to do a bit, right, you're going to have to like sing it a certain way, but you're not going to come off sounding as good as they sound. But my wife was was dead set on it and just literally loaded, loaded the playlist up with Sia songs. And then Keith sends me this. And you are... To tell me that Sia, whose face we have not seen, she obscures her face, and my wife just happened to say wolves with the same adorable accent. Really? Really? I've spent this entire morning as my wife lies sick in bed berating her to start to share her Sia money with me. I get it. I get it. You've been living a double life. You've been Miley Cyrusing me this entire fucking time, but the jig's up. You're running with woofs, and now you're on the prowl. All right? Calm it down. My wife is Sia. Joe writes, I don't think that the Stan Lee story could ever support a feature-length movie. It's a shame that network television is so irrelevant for dramas these days. I remember the weekend miniseries that came out during Sweeps Week when I was a kid. Ripped from the headlines, it was uh, the the cover or People magazine uh, in a four-hour format. That's the medium for Stan's story. Too bad we can't go back in time and get a 1988 Michael Gross to star in it. Joe, while while I appreciate and want to respect your nostalgia, I, I think you're full of shit. Because either uh, you are saying that Stanley's story is too threadbare for an hour and a half and then asking for it to go probably effectively two and a half hours with commercials if you're doing the old standard miniseries format, or you're saying that it should be bigger, for which we have the natural progression for miniseries. They're called Netflix. Netflix original series are the natural outgrowth of those miniseries things. Now, those specific kinds of miniseries, the ripped from the headline kind of stuff, that, that's a format that could deserve a comeback. But either you're saying that Stanley's story is too small for a movie or too big for a movie. And I think that in this modern era, we have perfect formats for both. Jacob writes, Tom Holland looks like a young Stan Lee and having someone play him and, the, and his most well-known creation would be rad. That would be cool. I, I think that would be interesting. Nigel writes, I'll keep this short. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, wiry, can have a frenetic energy, can definitely be a nerd if the role car calls for it. I'm going to say that Joseph Gordon-Levitt is, is still a little bit too laconic for me. Like, even, even in 500 Days of Summer, he's disconnected for reasons that aren't nerdetry, Right? Like, like, it's definitely a weird distinction. You can be an outsider, you can be a loner, and be like, oh, man, I just don't connect with people. What's up with people? And that's, like, kind of cool, right? But that's not Stan Lee. Stan Lee is like, ma, you, Excelsior, why don't, why don't we have a, uh, a superhero 
who is uh, 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 half gas, half my ass. And then he farts. And then it's like a funny thing. Tom Holland does look like a young Stan Lee, by the way. That is that is for real. Frozen Summers writes, and this is actually my favorite. I'd cast Andrew Garfield as 60s Stan Lee. He's got the wiry frame, Jewish heritage, and his current IMDb profile photo has a real Stan Lee vibe. Although anyone wanting to play Stan will probably have to fight Mark Maron in a steel cage to get the role. Uh, look, Mark Maron's not getting it. Mark Maron's a grouch. It's not going to happen. But I like Andrew Garfield. I like Andrew Garfield a lot for, for a Stan Lee role. I do think he can play spastic. I do think that he can play a, a, a dorkable he played a Spider-Man, so you get a little bit of that, a little meta action in there. But you can also age him up because any kind of biopic is going to start with the earliest days and it's probably going to end with the battle for Marvel, like it's a bankruptcy or something like that. If you're, if you're trying to tell like a big arc, then you know there's, there's a really cool arc where you can tell the story of like Stan Lee from getting into Marvel – to Marvel's bankruptcy, and there's a great book, uh, Comic Wars, I think it's called, where it, it talks about the bankruptcy uh, uh, of Marvel and uh, Avi Arad and Ike Pettermuller, who owned Toy Biz, rescuing Marvel. And part of the way that they did it is they wound up securing loans from banks that they probably would not have gotten, but they knew that all the guys who are actually underwriting the loans were gigantic fucking nerds. So they would bring Stan Lee into the room and they'd let Stan Lee be good, uh, you know, be be like, like, oh, well, well, well you know, when I first wrote Thor, uh, uh, and everybody was like charmed and it was great. So you just kind of play that element up about it and you make it that like Stan Lee is now saving Marvel and I think that would be a great little biopic. You begin it with him breaking into the business. You end it with him saving Marvel. And then you always have room for the sequel where, I don't know, some other shit happens. But those, uh, Andrew Garfield would be among the ones that came in. Uh, 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 among among the ones that came in, I would think that that, that was my absolute favorite. So big shout out to Frozen Summer for uh, hitting the nail right on the head. But folks, you know what that means. Oh, yes. Oh. It's about time that we descended into the f cutting edge of intellectual thought. Ladies and gentlemen, these are high thoughts. Music is just air. All right, let let's. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop this right now, just so everybody knows. This is an, a monumental moment in High Thoughts history, because this is the first time that a High Thought has been forgotten and reported again, which is just the most High Thought thing to do on the planet. I just wanted to recognize that. Is history stories we just tell when we're high a martini glass is also great for milk and cookies If I can.
camel's hump is made of water. Do they ever dry hump? Are jellyfish sad that there aren't any peanut butter fish? Astronomy is just long distance geology. If you eat by yourself at a graveyard, you're still having a picnic because you're never Really? Hello? Since potatoes are grown from pieces of other potatoes, is it possible that we're all eating the same original Potato. Man, those are getting so good that I'm going to have to start not using the ones that were obviously ripped off from Shower Thoughts. There's some really good original ones. There's some really, really, really good original ones. I'm going to start cutting the Shower Thoughts ones. I want to go ahead and thank the Grand Jury, the folks that support us the most at Pay Jury Daily. Dot com selected to the jury pool today Bill, Dustin, Middle Age, Mike, BioCal, Robert H, Brian C, M, and Trey, the Melodica Man. Now would be a good time to go ahead and get on the uh, stickers or DIAF mailing list. Go to bit.ly slash stickers or DIAF. New shit coming in a couple days. Jurydaily at gmail.com is where you can write into the show or leave a comment right here on the YouTube page. That is youtube.com slash Justin Robert Young. We record live Monday through Thursday at twitch.tv slash Justin R. Young. Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat is also at Justin R. Young. And you can continue to connect with listeners and viewers of this fine program by joining our Discord at bit.ly slash jury discord. That's it for the week, friends. Until next time, this is your old pal, Justin Robert Young, uh, asking you very politely to give a round of applause to Mr. Wacky, but more importantly, begging you to please don't die! Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. (laughs) 